History is for everyone and it's a huge part of public life. It causes many not only to enjoy it, but sometimes even become obsessed with exploring the past to figure out how we got to this point. In fact, Schrag goes as far to describe history as a social necessity. And I think he's right. Historians show why the past matters and how it can be used, not only to make sense of the present, but to also help us shape the future. We tell stories that must be told, stories that must be remembered from the past, stories we need to know now in these moments to combat contemporary challenges. The understanding of the past choices and behaviors can help us think and live more critically, to challenge power and dominance and popular narratives, to engage with multiple perspectives that include diverse and omitted voices, and to suggest improvements throughout society. It's not just learning about dead people, but it's actually using history in real life. After all, history is powerful, it does shape students' lives, it sways jury verdicts, it builds and destroys reputations, and it even informs those in power on whether or not to go to war. And for those that study history and historians, there are various roles to fill. While being the ultimate hybrid field, historians consult archaeology, anthropology, economics, law, literature, linguistics, journalism, philosophy, psychology, sociology, science, storytelling, and even statistics. Although history and historians are not perfect and they cannot be perfect, sometimes even critiqued as being uh, somewhere between fictional literature and science, the critical faculties that are built for historians that are even cross-disciplinary allow for historians to chase the truth and chase objectivity, even if it is impossible to get there due to our own bias and our partisanship and even our preconceived axioms that we are unable to escape. But historians do their best and to be honest, it's the best thing that we have. Putting all this together, historians are able to confront lies and omissions of the collective memory. To give one example, historians can, to some degree, analyze how Haiti turned out the way it did, from its long history of slavery, imperialism, and exploitation, such as the Haitians not only enduring slavery, but even having to pay money to imperial powers, something to the tune of $21 billion, and that's after they were enslaved. Just having this understanding emboldens a call to action for awareness and maybe even reparations. So history does in fact matter, even if we don't know it, even if many don't believe it. It does have the power to impact our economy and our democracy and our society overall. And if you think that is too dramatic, we can be more realistic to at least say that it impacts our daily choices and the way we orient ourselves in the world. I think the most realistic and relevant way I plan to contribute to society is by teaching. Dr. Casey says in his Mod 4 video how K-12 history teachers are on the front lines where people get most of their history. This may be the most that people engage in the subject throughout their lives, or at least more formally. And when you think of that, that puts a really serious burden on history teachers. This class overall has certainly changed some of the ways I see history and some concepts have bled through into my own classroom already. For example, I taught imperialism not long ago from an American cultures class, and I was actually able to include some of the greater United States maps and statistics, like the 13% of the population living overseas, until later it actually grows to 51% with the US occupying uh, territory after World War II, or even in 1903, how the US would claim 94 islands. That was all information that was new to me. I also try to include more activities that allow students to actually practice some of these skills for themselves, like researching and considering bias and corroborating. And luckily for me, I have a Princeton guide on that. So much of the tips and the pointers in there definitely helped me a lot and they will certainly help my students as well. In fact, my master plan is actually to continue to make a high school history magazine and have the students do their own history for themselves, practicing the skills and then publishing their work for the community and for the school. Now, I don't wanna to get too much into semantics and I understand that we argue about definitions, um, but I at least plan on doing something similar to public history. And that's something that the National Council on Public History defines as 
the many and diverse ways in which history is put to work in the world, essentially applying history to the real world. That's what I'd like to do with my students and I'd like to do myself, whether we are making videos for our community on history or teaching history skills or making a magazine. I'd like to be heavily involved with my students to make content in general for the public. So in this way, my hopes are to at least provide some opportunities for myself and for others to make history relevant, to make it useful, and hopefully build a school and community culture around this. Thank you for a great class and thanks for watching.